Hi, this is Matt the Game Explainer. Today I'm going to be taking a look at Glendrover's Empires Age of Discovery. Um, this uh, is a game that was published by Ego Griffin Games uh, in August of 2015 and is a deluxe reprint of an earlier version of the game called Age of Empires 3 The Age of Discovery. Uh, again, also designed by Glenn Drover. Now, um, again, the, normally my videos focus on you know an in-depth rules explanation, um, a little bit of a strategy discussion, and because this game, um, or the original game, was out since 2007, um, I'm going to focus a little more in this video on the differences between the original version of the game and this new uh, deluxe version by Eagle Griffin Games. Um, also, for full disclosure, um, I was part of a committee that was uh, brought on board by Eagle Griffin Games to do the redesign. Um, my primary input was on the rule book and getting the rules uh, kind of cleaned up and, and more detailed um, from the original rules. Um, I, but I did not have kind of a hand in any of the kind of graphic redesign or any of those kind of aspects other than just you know, kind of reviewing things for uh, accuracy. So um, in any case, if there's you know, obviously some aspects of this new design that you don't like, Sorry, um, I, I think the, I think it turned out really well, but um, you know, hopefully, if you do decide to go play this game or pick up this game, that you'll find it to be a really good experience. Now, um, let me just show you the box top from the original version. Um, this was the original version again, Age of Empires Three, the Age of Discovery by Tropical Games. Um, again, brought out by Glen Drover in two thousand seven. Um, eventually, Eagle Games purchased the rights to the base game. And they came out with an expansion. That expansion was called the Builder Expansion. Right? So this came out in about 2010 or 2011. Um, introduced a new type of worker into the game and some additional tiles and um, some other changes to the base game. Um, and again, you can play the game with or without you know, the Builder Expansion. Now with this new deluxe version, um, Eagle Griffin Games decided to combine the Builder Expansion right into the base game. Now that doesn't mean you have to play with it. Um, they were very careful in the, both in the rule book and in the components uh, to make sure that if players just again wanted to play the original base game without any of the builder expansion add-ons, you can do that. Um, or you can add in any or all of the additional um, aspects of the builder expansion into the game as you, um, you know, play it over and over. So it kind of is a nice little almost expandable game, if you will, from the standpoint of you can play the base game. And if you play it a few times and you want to try out some of the new builder expansion aspects, then you can go ahead and include those. Um, the other thing they did, I'm not going to show you it right now, but towards the end of the video, I'll flip the board over. Um, they went ahead and included a new map on the back side of um, the board in this new deluxe edition. Uh, it's a world map instead of a map of um, kind of the new world colonies, if you will, North, Central, and South America. Um, and um, there's not a huge difference in terms of how the game plays, um, I don't think, between the world map and this, this original map, other than um, in order to play on the world map side, you do need to buy a small expansion um, from Eagle Griffin Games. Um, it gives you some different um, tiles uh, to use in the game and some uh, new capital buildings that also uh, go along with the back side of the board. So some of these new tiles like um, spices and tea and things like that, um, those are now applicable to the back side of the board. And you don't get these um, tiles and um, other buildings in the box. You have to buy them separately. I don't know how much those cost, um, but I'm, you know, again, that's only if you want to use the, back, the map on the back side of the board would you need those new tiles. Um, otherwise, you get everything you need to play the game plus the builder expansion in the new, in the new box. Now, um, I'm going to go over just a real brief overview of the type of game this is and a brief you know, rules explanation. I'm not going to go, go real in-depth, like I said, because I don't want to spend all the time on the video doing that. Uh, I'm going to focus more on the difference between the original game and the new game, both in terms of components and gameplay. Um, so, obviously we have a new board, right? Um, a new look on the board. Uh, functionally, it's exactly the same as the original game. It just has a new look. I think they really cleaned it up, made it very clear kind of where each of the colonies are. They made each of the colony areas bigger because that was one of the complaints in the original game. Once you started getting a lot of workers over there, um, a lot of your figures, it would get really crowded and be kind of hard to see what's what. So that's really been improved. Um, but the whole idea of the game is, uh, again, it's a worker placement game. So players will have, you know, a whole bag full of these plastic workers um, of different types that they'll be um, using each turn to place out into these event boxes on the right-hand side of the board. Each event box 
um, will give the players a different kind of benefit depending on you know which box you put your workers in. So the way the game plays, it, you know, each turn, and there's eight turns in the game, uh, each player will start with five workers. And one of the nice improvements of this new version of the game is they've included player boards. Okay, so for each um, player board, let me grab one of the base ones here. Um, here. Here we go. So here's Portugal. Um, it's got a spot on here for five workers. So at the beginning of each turn of the game, um, each player is going to grab five of their basic workers, which are these uh, co oops, colonist pieces, okay, little colonist workers here, and you're going to put those down here uh, in your available workers area, okay, like so, all right, so you'll have five of these guys, and um, then players are going to take turns placing these workers out onto the board one at a time, okay, so the nice thing about these um, player boards is it's very easy to see, you know, as I'm starting to place my workers, how many workers I have left. Because what was happening before was players would have, you know, all of their workers from their bag, right? They'd, they'd dump them all out by their play area, and then it wasn't always real clear how many workers they had placed and how many they had left. Um, because one of the things that's nice about this game, as you go through and start playing the game, some of the things that you can do out here and some of the, the resources that you can get will give you more workers to place, right? And in a worker placement game, it's usually helpful to be able to place more workers. So um, as the game progresses and you go from turn to turn, players won't always have the, the, the five, you know, minimum workers to place. Sometimes they'll have six, seven, eight, nine, depending on, you know, what strategy they're following. And they'll also have a different mix of workers. So it's really important for each player to be able to clearly show, here's how many workers I have, here's what types I have uh, that I can place on this turn. And then players will, like I said, place one worker at a time going in player order. And there's a player order box right here. Um, and um, you'll place one worker at a time out into these event boxes. So, you know, I could place a worker here, and then when it comes back around to my turn, maybe I place a worker up here, right? And then maybe, I, you know, my next turn, I want to place a worker here, and so on, okay? So as you play through the game, you're going to be placing your workers out on the board. Now, once everybody's placed all their workers for that, you know, for that particular turn, then we're going to resolve these event boxes from top to bottom. And um, kind of going down them really quickly, the very top box is initiative. So if you want to change up the player order down here, then you have to go up to the initiative uh, box. And if you place a worker in the first spot, then you're going to become the first player on the next game turn. You're also going to get one coin. Um, if you go into the second spot, you'll, get, you'll be second place next turn, and you'll get two coins, and so on. Um, the colonist dock, which is the second box, that's how players are going to take their workers and move them over to the left side of the board into these colonies, right, the New World colonies. Because that's really the whole theme of this game is, is right after Christopher Columbus has, you know, uh, discovered and they've colonized the Caribbean, and now they want to colonize the rest of the New World. So as a European power, whether you're you know, France, Spain, Portugal, New, um, uh, England, you want to um, be able to send your guys over and colonize the New World because you're going to score points for those guys um, three times during the game. So anyway, if you put guys on the colonist dock, then they go over and you can place them in one of the colonies. Now, um, the way the colonies score is at the end of each age. So at the end of turn three, turn six, and turn eight, we're going to go through and score all the colonies. And whoever's got the most workers, so it's a majority, you know, majority, uh, area majority game, whoever's got the most workers in a colony will score three points. Oh, I'm sorry, six points uh, for being in first. Second place will score two points, and third place and beyond will score nothing. Um, now, let me show an example of that. So let's say by the end of um, you know turn three, uh, the orange player has three workers in New Grenada. The yellow player has, um, let's say, two workers, right? So yellow, uh, orange would score six points, and yellow would score two. Now, let's say instead that they tied, right? So both players had... Uh, three workers in New Grenada. Then they would each score two points because they're tied for first. And if anybody was in second place, let's say uh, Blue also had a worker here, um, then Blue would score nothing because there's a tie for first. Right. So it's either six points for solo first, two points for a tie for first, or zero um, if there's more than two players tied. Uh, and if there's you know anybody in second place and beyond, they'd get nothing in this uh, scenario. So that's how you're going to score points for majorities in the colonies. You know, each colony will be scored as long as a player 
a single player has at least uh, three workers in the colony. If nobody had three workers, let's say it was like that, at the you know when it's time to score, because no player has at least three workers, then New Grenada will not score anybody any points, all right, for that particular scoring round. So that's one big aspect of the game: get your workers from the colonist dock over into the new world, um, try and get majority either first or second place, so you can score points. Um, there's other ways to score points in the game, of course. Um, through economy, building your economy, and also by buying these capital buildings, which I'll explain in a minute. Um, so that's the kind of the other neat part of the game, is there's, it's kind of a multidimensional way of scoring points. But the colonies are very important, because they score three times during the game. All of your other victory points are only scored once. Now, um, the uh, up here there's going to be some trade goods. I didn't put any of those out, but at the start of each turn... Um, from this handy dandy bag, which is included in the deluxe edition, um, you're going to you know draw four trade goods out at random, and trade goods are basically a set collection mechanic. So let me show you some of these. Oops, yeah, I dropped one. All right, let me grab another one. Okay, so you're going to have these trade goods, all right, and you can um, there's all different kinds, all right. Like here, there's um, indigo, fish, and sugar. Okay. So these were the four I drew at random at the start of the turn, and they get placed up here in the trade good box. Okay, uh, and it doesn't matter what order they're placed in because what matters instead is the order that the workers are placed in. Right. So if orange went there first, he would get first choice of those four trade goods. If and then if yellow goes second, he would get second choice of those four trade goods when you resolve that box. Collecting those um, trade goods is a way um, to build up your economy. It's a way to get money every turn, and the way that works is. For every, um, for any three trade goods that you have, doesn't matter what they are, you're going to earn a dollar every turn. But if you happen to have three of a kind, then that's worth three dollars. And if you have four of a kind, that's worth six dollars every turn. So um, that's really important is to try and build, you know, like sets of, of trade goods. And that builds up your, your money economy so that you can use money then to um, buy capital buildings, to wage war, and buy additional uh, workers if you want to. The main thing you're using money for, though, in this game is buying capital buildings, okay? Now, again, in the Kickstarter version, and if you want to pay a little extra, you can buy these metal coins from uh, Eagle Griffin Games. Um, and these are really awesome. They're, they're gold and silver, uh, Spanish doubloons or pieces of eight. And they, um, they're, really, they're really heavy. They make a nice clinky sound, and they really stack awesome. As you can see, they stack really, really well. And um, these, you know, again... Uh, if you kickstarted it, you'll get those. Otherwise, you can pay a little extra um, if you buy the game from Eagle Griffin, or if you you know want the coins, you can get them off their site. Otherwise, you'll get the plastic coins uh, with the game. The plastic coins came with the original version. Uh, they were very well regarded. Here's what they look like. Um, again, gold and silver. They're uh, even bigger than the metal ones. They have a nice clinky sound as well, and they work really well. Um, so these are nice coins, and that's what comes in the box unless you um, pay a little extra for the metal ones. Um, now, the next box down is uh, merchant shipping, okay? Um, each turn, there's going to be one of these uh, merchant ships available in that merchant shipping box, all right? These are really nicely molded ships. Uh, you put a ship there, and what happens is players can place workers there one at a time, of course, but they can place as many guys there as they want. And then when that box is resolved, whoever has the most guys in that box will um, take the ship. So what good is a ship? Well, the ship is actually like a wild trade good. So you use it to build your economy. You can add one ship to, to each of your sets of trade goods. So for example, if I were to get those two indigo trade goods and I also had a ship, I could use the ship as a third indigo and now I'm getting three bucks for that set instead of one dollar every turn. Um, and also the nice thing during the game is as you get more trade goods and more ships, you can rearrange your sets uh, however you want you know, throughout the game. Um, so you can always maximize your economy that way. Um, the next box down are, are the capital buildings. There's going to be f uh, five capital buildings placed out uh, at the start of each turn. Um, any capital buildings that are not purchased, though, are going to remain in place, and then we just add new buildings to build back up to five. Um, there are different sets of buildings, though, for each age. So again, we have three ages in the game. In age one, um, we have... Uh, the green buildings, which are primarily around getting new workers, getting extra workers. Like, uh, for example, let's see, let me give you an example. Yeah, here we go. So if I were to go and, and buy this building, and this is, again, to, to get these capital buildings, you have to have cash. So you start the game with 10 bucks, 
And you can, by building, by getting trade goods, you can build up your economy to keep buying these buildings. And you want them because they're really cool. Um, so this one is New World Mission, plus one missionary each turn, right? So it's got a little infinity symbol up here, which is a new edition, uh, something that's with the new edition of the game. It tells you if a building is a one-time use, immediate use, or ongoing power. And it also, in this case, like this uh, little builder symbol down here, it... Um, Sorry for the focus, folks. It's it's just not not wanting to focus here. But that little builder symbol um, tells you that this tile came from the builder expansion, right? So if you don't want to use any of the builder pieces, it's really easy to sort out the tiles that came with the expansion and those that came with the base game. So if you were to buy this capital building, you'd put it on your player board, you know, like so. You can put it in this big area over here, and uh, anywhere you'd like. And then it's a reminder that you're going to get an extra missionary, which are these guys. You're gonna get one of these extra workers to place every turn, follow you know, starting um, the turn after you get the building. So now instead of just having the five basic colonists, I'm gonna have five colonists plus a missionary. So I'm gonna have six workers to place every turn. And these missionaries are really nice because when you place them on the colonist dock and they show up in the new world, you get to add an extra colonist into that colony for free. So it's helping you getting majority uh, faster in those colonies. That's what these you know missionaries do. Um, in any case. Um, so that's an example of a, of a capital building, and there's going to be five, like I said, available. Now, when we get to the second age, so it turns four through six, any of the remaining green buildings get wiped, and we move to the um, orange buildings from age two, okay, so there's a whole stack of these, and we start using those. And then when we get to age three, of course, we'll have the age three buildings, which are red, and all of the age three buildings, um, basically they're just giving you victory points based on different you know, conditions of the game. So some of them will give victory points like based on your economy. Some will give victory points based on how many guys you have in the new world. Others might give victory points based on how many soldiers you have in the new world or whatever. So there's lots of different ways to score points with these um, age three buildings. Okay, so uh, the next box down is this discovery box. This is actually the only event box on the board where you can leave guys out there from turn to turn. Otherwise, at the end of each turn, as we resolve the boxes, the workers get pulled off and put back in the general supply. Um, but this discovery box is how this new world is going to get discovered. So at the beginning of the game, we just have um, the Caribbean discovered, okay? Because um, Christopher Columbus was already there, he discovered it. So people can start sending you know, their workers to the Caribbean right away on turn one. But you can't send your guys to any of these other colonies until they get discovered. So at the beginning of the game, we put out these discovery tokens, one in each uh, colony, okay? And these discovery tokens, basically, um, they get placed out at random, face down. And when you send your workers from this discovery box, you can, you know, once you've built up a number of workers, you can send as many workers as you want to one region and say, I'm going to try and discover that region, let's say Brazil. And then on this tile, it's going to show you the strength of the tile. In this case, it's got a five strength. So you would have had to have sent at least five workers to uh, defeat this tile. And this is how many victory points it's worth at the end of the game. And then you get some bonus money. One, it's one-time bonus money based on how many soldiers you sent. In this case, four coins per soldier, plus an additional two coins, even if you sent no soldiers. Okay. And then so that's what would happen. Now, if you didn't, if you were unsuccessful discovering it, then per the base rules, you just leave the tile there. But there's some variant rules for how you want to handle those discovery tiles. Um, if you do discover it, you take the tile, you put it on your board, and you leave one colonist behind to get your colony started. So kind of get a little extra, you know, bump there. Um, and again, the first player to get at least three guys into a uh, particular region will establish the colony. They'll get to take a free trade good of a certain type from that colony. In this case, from Brazil, you get indigo, all right? Um, and you put that on your player board and you keep it for the rest of the game. So that's what these trade tokens are there for. Um, so anyway, that's what the discovery box is. You're, you're getting out there and opening up new areas of the world. Now, once you know Brazil gets opened up for discovery, right, by, let's say, the orange player, he, let's say he was successful and he got a guy there. Now, anybody can send their workers to Brazil. So if somebody's you know, got guys on the boat on the next turn, they could send them down there. And if orange doesn't send more guys down there, he might not be the first to establish a colony. So that's kind of the neat aspect of the game, is you're opening up the board as you go, and then players are going to, you know, hopefully rush in there and try and establish colonies to get victory points. Um, down here, you've got a specialist track. Uh, this is a way for you to place a worker. Maybe you place a base colonist 
on the missionary spot, and then um, when you resolve that spot, you'll um, add a missionary to your set of workers for the next turn. So it's like a one-time extra worker of a certain type. The warfare box, um, there's a couple different ways that you can wage war on your opponents in the colonies. It, this is not a war game by any stretch of the imagination. Um, warfare is simply a way to try and do a, some minor manipulation of the majority control in the colonies um, you know, prior to, to each of the scoring phases so that you can hopefully you know, maybe bump yourself up a little bit in points and bump somebody else down. Um, and there's you know, four opportunities each turn for people to uh, do warfare. And then again at the bottom is, is just where we keep track of the player order. And the player order doesn't change from turn to turn unless players go up and do the initiative box. So that's the basic idea of the game. You're going to play those eight turns, um, again, scoring the colonies three times. And then at the end of the game, there's going to be additional scoring. Um, you're going to score, and there's a nice really score pad, a nice really big score pad included in the game, and it's double-sided. Um, this is one way to keep score now in the new version of the game. Uh, they also do include a separate scoring board, um, so if players want to kind of move a piece along the board as the game progresses so that players can see how many points everybody has scored for the colonies so far, you know, that's a different way to score in the game. But um, using the score pad is a nice way to keep, have a, you know, a complete ledger of how everybody did in scoring. So this is your um, age one colony scoring, age two colony scoring, age three colony scoring, and then finally down here is the end game scoring, which... You're going to score points for your capital buildings, depending on which buildings you purchased, right? especially the age 3 buildings. You're also going to score points for your discoveries, so that's all your discovery um, counters here. And then um, once the entire new world has been discovered, there are also um, cards. There's a deck of cards here that are kind of represent going out and discovering the rest of the world right? that hasn't been discovered yet. So you have these discovery cards. And so if you want to continue to put guys in the discovery box, once all these areas have been discovered, then when you go out on the discovery, you just flip up the top card, and it, you know it looks very similar to one of the tokens. It tells you the native strength, the points, and the bonus money. Okay, and then you just keep the card by your board, and you score the points at the end of the game. Okay, um, now that's your discoveries. Okay, and then finally, there's also the economy scoring, which basically, however much money that you earned from your trade goods. Um, at the end of the last turn of the game, so at the end of turn eight, right, you're going to collect your income. Um, that income level, let's say it was, you know, 12 coins, you'll also get 12 victory points for that because you developed your, in, your economy up to that level by the end of the game, okay? So that's really your total scoring. Um, so everybody will add up all their points. Whoever's got the most points wins. So now let's talk a little bit about some of the other differences in the game, right? A lot of it is kind of components, right, upgraded components. Um, let me show you a couple things they did with the uh, the worker miniatures. Uh, in the base game, or in the original game, um, it, players a lot of times uh, said it was hard to tell apart the um, soldier from the um, uh, the captain, okay? So this is the captain figure. He's got a, a kind of a spyglass, and this is your soldier. He has a rifle. But as you can see, they're, they look pretty similar. And if you're, you know, you got a whole board, like, all full of guys, and you're trying to figure out who's who's got what, it can be hard to tell them apart. So what they did in the new version is they put a square base on the captain. Okay, so that's easy to tell apart. And then the other th two workers that were hard to tell apart were the um, the base colonist worker and the merchant. All right. So here's what they look like. And um, again, the main molds are the same from the from the original version of the game, but now the merchant has a square base. So it's really easy to tell who's got a merchant. Um, and then the other molds were very unique already, so they didn't really change those at all. That is the, the missionary, right, which we talked about, and then the builder that comes with the builder expansion. Those guys look different. Um, so those are all the different molds. So two square bases, again, doesn't sound like a big change, but boy, it can really help on the gameplay, especially when you're looking at another player's board and trying to figure out, okay, how many guys does he have left to place, what kind are they, and where might he want to place them based on what type they are. Because one thing I didn't really explain is um, the different types of workers will give different bonuses depending on which box you put them in. So let me give you an example of the merchant. Um, if you place the merchant on the colonist dock, okay, uh, up here, then when he goes over to the new world, you get $5 income. Boom. Immediate. Just one time, but it's 5 bucks. That's pretty huge in this game. Um, also, if you place him in the merchant shipping box like that, then he counts as two guys instead of one. 
So it's a way to help win the majority and get the boat, okay? So um, the captain, for example, um, he can be used in two different places. Again, he, he will act as two guys in the merchant shipping box, but he also, if you put him in the discovery box, acts as two guys. So again, that's, that's pretty nice. And you already know about the soldier, right? He gives you extra money if you go on discovery with him. Um, but if you send him on the colonist stock over to the colonies, then he can be used to wage war because you can't do any warfare in this game unless you have soldiers in the new colonies. Uh, so that's a big big part of the strategy of the game is using your, your specialist workers um, in, in ways that give you advantages. Um, now the other thing they did with the game is they uh, thickened up all the cardboard, right? These are really thick tiles. And again, I don't know how you can see them, but they're really nice and thick. Uh, and let me show you an example of the three different um, <clears throat> iterations of the game, if you will. The first original game, this would have been um, the, the, like a... Um, what is it? Oh, a capital building, right? New World Cartography. Um, it had kind of a, a flat finish, if you will, and, and this was the thickness. When the Builder expansion came out, um, they had to reprint all of the buildings so that they all had the same, you know, fit, look and finish, right? Um, so, but it was pretty much the same thickness. It just had a, a glossier finish, if you can kind of see how it shines here on the edge compared to this one, right? So this one's, yeah, there you go. The one on the right is a much glossier finish. That came with the Builder expansion. Now, in the new game, they're a little bit bigger, first of all, wider. They're definitely thicker. Um, let me drop one of these down. So they're definitely thicker. And um, they have a nice linen finish. Okay, so again, they're not super shiny, uh, and they're pretty easy to read. Okay, so nice improvement on the tiles. They did the same thing for the trade good tiles. They're thicker, but otherwise they're the same size, you know, uh, height, height and, and width, if you will, uh, as the original game. Um, the other huge improvement, which doesn't, it's not going to sound like much, but it's actually huge. Um, the colonist dock is the only um, box here that scales based on the number of players. So if you're doing a two-player game, there's only three spots available, plus a couple special spots based on some buildings. If you're in a three-player game, then there's supposed to be five spots available, plus the X and Y. So depending on, you know, how many players you have for your game, it's nice to be able to take the right uh, the, the card for the right number of players. Let's say I was doing a four-player game. I'm going to take this tile, and I'm going to put it up here before the game starts on the colonist stock. And then that um, shows very clearly how many spots are available each turn for players to place workers there. So there's no confusion. The other thing we did with the board is um, putting reminder text in each of the boxes. Um, where you can use specialists, right? How, what specialist advantages are available and in which boxes. There's also a really nice um, player aid. There's three of them that come with the game um, that you can put between the players and reference anytime you want. They show you the turn order, the event box resolution, the distribution of the discovery tokens, right? So you have an idea of your chance of success, all the specialist capabilities, how you score victory points, and what things come into play if you're using parts of the Builder expansion. So there's three of these in the game, and those are, those are a nice handy reference. Um, I, I already mentioned the bag. The bag you know, comes with the game to draw out the trade good tiles. That's another nice bonus. Um, again, the base game now comes with support for six players, which again is really nice. The rule book's much improved. And um, the box itself, let me see if I can get the box up here. It's massive and it's heavy. And it comes with this molded plastic insert, which really holds everything nicely. You've got a slot for each of your bags of player pieces. You've got um, a two-tiered, um, the bottom here is for your trade goods, and then on top sit your capital buildings, which are really nice. You've got a couple other components here for your, like your coins and, and cards and things. And this really works well. And then on top of that, um, there's a plastic cover that goes over it, and you put all the boards and everything on top. So it really holds everything well, and the new box is much sturdier than the old box. Um, let's see, I think that's the main differences, if you will, between the old and the new. Um, there's also some uh, additional player boards that you can get as expansions or add-ons. Um, some of those are um, the Ottoman Empire, um, which comes with um, one of the new colors, um, Prussia, and um, I think Denmark is a new one. Um, those um, Player boards, let me see. Yeah, the original ones, Holland, France, yeah. So those are the three new player boards, and they come with um, additional 
uh, player piece colors, black, white, and um, gold. So if you wanted to get new boards and you know new colors, those um, are probably going to be available for at least some period of time from directly from Eagle Griffin Games. All right, so that's it. Um, hopefully that was um, a good illustration of what you know comes with the new version of the game. Uh, oh, I was going to show you the back side of the board. All right, we're going to dump a whole bunch of stuff off. Eh. All right, flip it over and see if you can see it. All right, there you go. That looks pretty good. All right, so that's the back side of the board. So you can see the, um, you know, the event boxes didn't change. All that changed really was the colonies, if you will, which now represents the world. Um, and there's some different uh, trade goods, like I said, like silk and tea and um, one other, uh, spices, silk, tea, and spices are your new trade goods. And then you use some of the previous trade goods. The other big change with this um, back side of the board is you no longer use the uh, discovery deck or the discovery cards. So there's one more region on the board, but then there's no cards. So uh, discovery becomes uh, really important earlier in the game because you want to get out there, discover things, and um, start establishing your colonies early. Um, and then warfare could also be a little bigger aspect of this version of the game because, again, you no longer can go out and discover as the game goes on. So then you may want to just make sure you've got you know, majorities in the colonies. All right, so that's it. That's um, Glenn Drover's... Empires Age of Discovery from Eagle Griffin Games. Thanks for watching.